Are you looking to spend 2004 to 2500 pounds on a gaming PC and you specifically want a, a load of RGB and B, a 9900K and an RTX 2080? Well, this could be the video for you. Otherwise, it's probably still the video for you if you've clicked on this because, you know, you get to see a PC being built, you get to see, you know, rainbow barf RGB, and you get to see the performance of it too, so feel free to stick around. Now, of course, I know that most of you guys are probably ready to click off already since you haven't seen performance results or you haven't seen the building or whatever else, so here's a quick uh, lineup. In fact, I'll leave it over there of the time codes that you can skip to for the parts, the building, and then the performance, so go check those out. So first things first, let's run you down the parts. We've got an Intel 9900K in a Gigabyte Aorus Z390 Master. Uh, we also have Aorus RAM as well, in fact Aorus or Gigabyte supplied the majority of the components here. This isn't a sponsor video, they just happen to really want to supply a whole load of parts for our build guide, so that the, this is the result of that. But either way, as I said, we've got 16GB uh, of Aorus RAM, and it's actually the RGB RAM, and it's actually even more interesting than that, because it actually comes with two effectively dud or demo uh, RAM modules, so they have no actual RAM chips on them, they're not actually functional RAM. RAM, you still only have two functioning RAM DIMMs, but you get four DIMMs in the box uh, so that you have the full complements of RGB in your you know, system, uh, whether you like it or not, really. We also have a Gigabyte RTX 2080 Aorus Extreme, and again, also that's very much heavy on the, the complements of the RGB side. And then the rest of the parts, we have also actually a Gigabyte Ultra Durable 500 gig SSD, which is quite cool. And while I don't necessarily have it in this system right now, I would recommend a two terabyte about Seagate Barracuda hard drive which will be linked in the description down below along with the rest of the parts if you want to check those out. Now for CPU cooler we actually have a Cooler Master Master Air Pro 4 which is a little bit on the light side for this build. I would recommend either a 120 or 240 mo AIO but just because of space considerations uh, this uh, this system with the, the where the motherboard's sitting and with this case specifically uh, I couldn't fit the Fractal Design S24 that I wanted in here so bear that in mind. And speaking of the case we have a Fantex P350X, which is a tempered glass but very RGB case. And we also have a, a Gigabyte power supply, it's an 850 watt as well, which is a rather nice fully modular unit. And finally, the last bit of RGB in here is the NZXT Hue 2. It's a rather nice kit and has a lot of optional accessories that you can add to it as well if you want ambient lighting or if you just want in system, or especially if you do have stuff like an NZXT case or an NZXT cooler, then a lot of those will work very well with that, so feel free to check it out. So that you know the parts, let's get to actually building the thing. First thing I do is put the CPU in the socket, so that is lift the arm up, lift the bracket up, align the CPU correctly, make sure the gold triangle is aligned with the triangle on the motherboard, place it in gently, there's no force needed, and then place the bracket over the CPU and the arm down, and there you go, that's it. Next up, uninstall the RAM, and this is pretty easy, just open up all of the latches on the sides of the RAM DIMMs, and then align the notch in the modules with the notch in the slot, and then line it up and push it in gently or with a fair bit of force but evenly on both sides until you hear it click and do the same for the rest of the modules and if you like the demo modules too. Now generally I'd probably install the cooler at this point as well but because I actually had trouble fitting the cooler I was gonna use I didn't end up doing that until it was in the case but with uh, the Cooler Master Master Air there's a number of options you can do you can either do the way that I'm doing it which with these sort of basic push pins which I found are just a little bit easier for my testing purposes getting it on and off but you can also have the back plates with the screws through and mounting it down kind of a bit more properly so generally I'd recommend that way but again it will vary for your cooler so feel free to take a look at your instructions for the cooler that you have. Next up we're going to prep the case and the power supply so first of all getting the power supply out you're going to uh, attach all of the cables that you'll need so in this case we need a 24 pin we only need a single 8 pin for this even though the motherboard has two 8 pin connections we only need one to run it really so we're going to use one of those and then we need a PCIe connection and a SATA and Molex connection which in this power supply is actually a double so we're only going to need one of those total. Once those are all connected to the back of the power supply we can then open up the case and put the power supply into the case with a fan facing down since this case has a bottom mounted filter so that's nice to see and then four screws in the back and that's pretty much it. Then you can go around to the front take the front side panel off uh, or the, the left hand side side panel off and then get ready to install your motherboard.
motherboard. Now because of the clearances with this case, I had to remove the rear 120mm fan, so bear that in mind if you see it disappear or reappear, but either way, with installing the motherboard, the rear I.O. shield is pre-attached to this motherboard, so it's super easy. All you do is make sure all of the nine standoffs are in place, and then put the motherboard in, and with this case, you actually have a little, uh, essentially, extruded bits on the central and the upper central standoff so that you can hang the motherboard effectively in the case without any screws and then you can go and add your nine screws to hold the, the motherboard into the case. Once you've done that you can then install the SSD. Now again I would recommend doing this properly as opposed to how I do it because I'm lazy uh, but either way you attach the SATA data cable and then the SATA power cable to the SSD. Ideally mount it to one of the two uh, SSD mounting points on the back of the case and then feed the SATA a data cable through to the motherboard where you can attach it to one of the I think six SATA boards. I would then recommend installing your power cable so your 24 pin on the sort of central top right and then your 8 pin up the top left. Also things like your front uh, power switch connectors, your USB 3 front panel headers, your audio front panel headers and for the NZXT Hue system and um, once I'd ran the LEDs for that uh, also the USB cable and the power cable for that one. And pretty much lastly installing the graphics card is again really very easy you remove a couple of brackets at the back of the case that line up with the top PCIe slot and then you push the little uh, sort of tab connector down to the locking piece uh, down place the graphics card in even pressure into the slot until it clicks in and then two screws in the back to hold it in place and then your power connectors as well because this card comes with a little GPU support stand I thought I'd throw that in too so it's uh, just a little stand that you place under and tighten up so that it holds it up and otherwise that's pretty much the system built. You can do a little bit of cable management on top of that but otherwise that is pretty much what you end up with. Uh, very uh, RGB heavy but also fairly pretty uh, gaming PC that uh, is pretty capable of handling a fair bit so why don't we take a look at what it can handle. So starting off with 3MR Firestrike, as you'd expect this is an impressive build, especially at 1080p, it actually beats out the Threadripper and 2080 Ti systems, so that's pretty cool, and of course you can check out 3 Mark's website for comparisons. Now in terms of GTA 5, I think I'm going to have to drop this as a benchmark because 1080p and 4040p are basically the same here, while that really shouldn't be the case, but the 4K number seems reasonable. In terms of Unigen Heaven, we're looking at again pretty, pretty reasonable scores, including 64 FPS at 4K, which is actually pretty good for heaven. In terms of player knowns battlegrounds on ultra settings, testing on Sanok, we're looking at 147, 106, and 66 FPS, respectively, for 1080p, 1440p, and 4K, all with pretty good minimums and maximums. And in terms of Fortnite, 191, 127, and 64, respectively, again. And also, again, all really good minimums and maximums, too. So, very playable and very enjoyable gaming experience on this system. So, as you've seen, this performs excellently in games. In fact, it's one of the best configurations for 1080p, 1440p gaming right now, and I think it's going to last a fair while too. It's also pretty great for a number of other things, including productivity, for video editing, for 3D modeling, and a lot of other stuff. And while you can check out my reviews of the individual components to see if they're necessarily overall worth the money, it's certainly an interesting build if you're after a high-end Intel CPU and a high-end NVIDIA graphics card and you've got money to spend and I guess you want some of that you know, like 30 FPS at 1080p RTX goodness. Um, but either way, that is uh, that is this build. If you've got any comments, feel free to leave them in the comments down below, funnily enough. Um, and of course, as I said, if you want any of the parts, I've left links to all of them in the description down below, so you can check those out if you want individual bits or you want to build the full system yourself go check that out. Otherwise, I would love to hear your thoughts on any future build guide ideas or anything else in the comments down below. Otherwise, that is kind of it. Feel free to check out the rest of the links in the description down below if you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday basis with live streams on Thursday nights. There's Patreon and a massive thank you to everyone who is a patron. You can also check out Amazon and Overclock UK affiliate links. They're free for you to use but massively help me out. And then there's also other videos over there and of course you can subscribe if you're new to the channel too. Otherwise, as I said, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments down below. But that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.